Welcome to Aztecs Now. I'm Ted Leitner. This is a football team that has won this many in a row. And I know that's no big deal, but it's a big deal. A, a team that's been struggling, be honest, for years and years now. And uh, now has an uh, even up record at 500 and has a big chore ahead for next Saturday. But we'll talk about, first of all, before we get to that, uh, last Saturday, when the Halloween night and all those bad jokes about, will it be a trick? Will it be a treat? It turned out to be a treat. It was struggle early, like it was against uh, Colorado State the week before, when they were down, what, 14 nothing and 21-7 at halftime. And they were down 10 nothing right there when Alston Amulo uh, catches the touchdown. That's his third in three consecutive games. And you remember, he got the big 60-yarder against Colorado State that blew it open. Now he gets this one here that brings the Aztecs back on the board, or on the board, for the first time at 10-7. And a little bit of defense against a New Mexico team, by the way, that I thought played very, very well and tough. And that's not easy to do when you haven't won a game. But Andrew Preston got in there uh, to get the sack and did a nice job there. And later, the drop punt. And, oh, nice hit by Demetrius Barksdale. How'd that taste? Ow! Ow! And then later on, uh, Ryan Lindley on the fade. DeMarco Sanson, who has, hey, be honest, become a star here. And in the shadow of Vincent Brown early, but now with Vincent out, he's become Vincent and has done a great job. And it worked on the fade before, so why not do it? To win the ball game, when the Essex were down in the fourth quarter, 20-16, to 16, DeMarco gets behind the two guys on the double team, makes a tremendous, tremendous catch, and the Essex get a lead. They had that lead right there, 23-20. They hold that lead, and they win the football game. And again, in terms of New Mexico not having won, yeah, but they beat the Aztecs eight consecutive years. They beat them six in a row in Qualcomm Stadium in Mission Valley, San Diego. So that was, in many, many ways, a huge, huge win. Met, greeted by, and with us, Brady Hoke. And I understand people say, whoa, gee, win an ugly win. <clears throat> a win is a win is a win. And I know even on, on, when they played better than that, you had some problems with this and that and this. But it was, like I said, struggle and, and lose or struggle and win. You'll take this. Oh, always. We'll always take the win. Uh, you know, it wasn't probably our prettiest game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think, and Ted, you said it, I think you have to give some credit to New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, they have some good football players on that team. And, and they came in and they played hard. They played with a lot of confidence uh, because of what's happened in the past. And I thought our team really responded well. And it's the second week in a row where, you know, the fourth quarter, we've won the fourth quarter. And when you do that, most of the time you're going to win games. And these are the kind of games where they have lost in years past, not to knock any coach or player from then. But I think it's the kind of thing, would you uh, correct me if I'm wrong, where you've done it before. And now you know you can do it. Did it at Colorado State, and you had that confidence. Hey, we've done this once. We can do it twice. Well, and that's something that you have to instill in a program. And I think our seniors, you know, and uh, DeMarco being part of that group, uh, have done a tremendous job of understanding that we're going to play the full 60 minutes. Uh, we all signed up for it, and we're going to stay together as a team no matter what happens. And there's always peaks and valleys during every game. And, you know, you just got to keep working through the bad times and correct the things you're not doing as well as you like and then uh, you know just keep pushing each other and, and good things will happen. Ryan Lindley one of the better quarterbacks I don't know how, how many games you've seen out there and in terms of in person or on television but this kid can play I and mean, you couldn't duplicate what he did at Colorado State with the 459 and the six touchdowns but three touchdowns is not bad. Give me, give me your analysis of Ryan's play in those two games back to back. Well I think you know Ryan's done a good job I think uh, you know this one uh, we had a little more trouble we didn't protect quite as uh, well mm -hmm. as we'd like to but uh, when we give him time to set his feet and he can scan the field and go from one read to the next read. I think he's as good as there is. And, and saw the catch there by number one, DeMarco Sampson. This is a kid who we'll talk to later on this program who had a lot of injury problems and suffered and suffered. And now you talk about, I hate that cliche, somebody's got to step up. Somebody's got to step up. With Vincent Brown out, someone had to step up. It's DeMarco Sampson. Well, DeMarco, you know, you can just see his progress from the spring through the summer. And the one thing that uh, I really like about him is his uh, leadership, his decision making, his uh, understanding more of the game and how to play the game. And as a coach, that's what you look for because the, the discipline and the life lessons that you teach in, in the game of football is important. And that's what it's all about. And I mentioned Vincent Brown before, who uh, we'll talk about, and you can confirm it. Pretty not, not going to have him for the rest of the year? It doesn't look like it right now. I think, you know, there's, uh, they'll check it now and then mm -hmm. and see how, how well it's healing. But I think he's pretty much gone for the year. And with Vincent having been where he was and now losing him, and then DeMarco Sampson steps up. I thought when Alston Amula was a freshman, this kid was very, very potentially special. And he has stepped up, I thought. And in terms of using him and, and your use of the tight end, right? tell me. 
Well, you know, the tight end, when you have a tight end like Austin, I think you can really uh, uh, use it as a weapon. And, and in Al's offense, uh, the tight end's always been a, an important part mm -hmm. of it. And I think you just see a little bit of the offensive playbook opening up a little more and, and a few other things that we think we can do and the tight end being part of it. And again, th th he is not. And Matthew Kowalik last year and then switched positions. I mean, he's not the prototypical tight end. He's not a 6'5", 6'6", 250 that you'd like to have in terms of blocking and other things. But he, but he does a lot of things well. Well, he does. And the one thing that he probably does as well as anything is find the open areas. And uh, he's got good concentration, got uh, very good hands. So when you got a guy like that, and then he's got the, uh, as he proved last week, he's got the ability to run after the catch with the football. And that's a big part of being a good tight end. So as coaches say, got a victory and, and you can't dwell on it, you got to move on. Well, in this case, uh, moving on means TCU fourth in the uh, one poll, in the coaches poll, sixth in the Associated Press, sixth in the BCS. Uh, they are terrific, as good, I think, as any team in the last few years in this conference. We'll have Coach Hoke look at TCU and this coming game Saturday at 1 here in San Diego when we come back on Aspects Now. Back with Aztecs now and back with Brady Hoke, head football coach, San Diego State University, uh, coming off that win against Colorado State and then against New Mexico and now TCU coming on. We talked, Brady, a lot about the offense and Ryan Lindley and DeMarco Sanson, and Austin Amulo, et cetera. On the defensive side, I know that defensive line is your baby. Were you pleased or not pleased? Well, you know, I think the, the one thing you're never pleased with is, especially coaching defensive linemen, you, you'd like to get more pressure on the quarterback and uh, I think near the end of the game I thought we did a much better mm -hmm. job of it uh, the thing that as a whole as a defense uh, we had guys running to the football I thought we played and we played too many plays and we put ourselves in that position but we we played extremely aggressive extremely hard and when you watch our guys in their effort to the football and flying around they, you know at the 93rd play they were playing just as hard as the first play were you concerned by the way because the time of possession which yeah. has been a problem before and i'll be a son of a gun it was like they had the ball meaning they the rams it seemed like the entire first half, it was like a 10-minute difference. That's a giant concern. Like you said, if I don't have the ball, you know, and my defense is not going to score, I can't score. Right. Well, and, and that's obviously a problem when you look at, you know, where we're at as a team. Uh, third down conversions offensively, we weren't very good uh, against New Mexico. And then third down defense, uh, we had four opportunities of, of third down and 10-plus where you've got to get off the field, and we didn't get it done. Well, we will see here about uh, a team much better. Here's a stupid question of the day. Gee, Brady, is this the toughest team, the best team you've played so far this year? Uh, TCU, duh. Well, you know what, <laughs> and you said it. They're, they're a tremendous football wow. team. Gary Patterson has done a great job down at TCU and his staff. And, you know, they're leading the conference in scoring. They're leading the conference in defense. Uh, they've won the last three, I think, by 123 points to, to seven or, ah. or 13, I think mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Six-ranked football team. They've got great players. Uh, they play well together. They have tremendous speed. And that's, Ted, the first thing that you see is, is the quickness of them as a football team on both sides of the ball. When you're showing tape, by the way, would you show, or a combination of, yes or no, would you show a BYU game where BYU could not contain that speed and got blown out, or would you rather show a close game or a combination of in terms of the psychological sure. effect on your players? Well, you know, our guys, you know, these are college students. They, they know what... Uh, 
what kind of program TCU has. They know what kind of athletes they have. So, you know, you always look at a combination of both. There's no question about it. But uh, our guys do a great job, the players do, of uh, uh, really looking at uh, what the tendencies are and what they feel they can accomplish, whatever position you're playing. When you have a guy like, I don't know who's going to be the defensive player of the year in this uh, conference, but Jerry Hughes has a very <laughs> a big, I think, a, a leg up on it. Do you have to, I know you have to account for him, sure. but do you change your blocking schemes? Do you assign someone to him? Do you have to double him? What's the plan? Well, you know, I'm not going to give you the whole plan right stupid now, question. but, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll do some things to try and keep him guessing a little bit. I think that's all part of it. You know, he, he's a tremendous athlete. He's up for uh, a lot of different awards nationally, and, uh, you know, he's a guy that, you, you, like you said, you got to know where he is, but you also have to do a good job of uh, uh, helping helping out guys now and then and, and trying to use his aggressiveness to your benefit. I tried, I tried to promise not to ask a stupid question. And I ask you, all right, give me the entire game plan for stopping Jerry Hughes like he's going to come out and give it to me. <laughs> come on. And on that same subject, you changed the offensive line in the course of your game. Sure. Because you were not pleased with the time, which you said they gave Ryan Lindley against Colorado State, but not. And that's what you're going to do in terms of just, hey, if you don't do it, I'll go find somebody Well, else. you know, we're fortunate. We've, we've got a lot of young guys and, and uh, guys who are really learning how to play at the college level still. And so uh, we're fortunate to have a little bit of depth and, uh, you know, to kind of uh, – play the best guys and who's playing the best and who's practicing the best. And when you have that competition, I think it makes you better as a team. Brady, congratulations. Uh, another great win. A win Thanks. is a win is a win. Yes, sir. And uh, TCU is going to be, as we mentioned, extremely tough and large. That'll be 1 o'clock coming up on Saturday. We showed many, many highlights because there are so many highlights to show of number one, DeMarco Sampson. He's a San Diego kid who has overcome a whole lot of injuries and other things to become right now one of the best, one of the best on the West Coast, not just in the Mountain West Conference. Talking with DeMarco Sampson live when we come on back here on Aztecs Now.